Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be here again this evening. And glory be to God who, who has made it possible for us to be alive and you know, to survive the pandemic so far. May his, name, may his name be highly glorified. Hallelujah. It's good to see everybody. Um, all my friends who are watching online as well, God bless you. It's good to see you. See, this evening I want to talk about a man called Obededom. You know, when we saw Obededom, I made, I made a lot of research concerning the name Obededom. There's a little bit of disagreement between scholars. Some claim that the obedient the Bible recorded is only one obedient in the scripture. Why some say we have about four obedient in the Bible. But from my own research or from my own understanding from what I read, we have like about four obedient in the Bible. About four, yes. There is one called obedient, the son of Jehundan. And that could be found in First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 38. Obedient, the son of Jehundan. Jesuntun, the son of Jesuntun, pardon me. I'm going to talk about Obedidom, the Gittite. That's the one I'm going to focus about. I'm not going to keep it long. I'm going to keep it short and sweet as the Lord has delivered in my heart because I have been studying the story of David. One of my favorite stories of the Bible. How, how far the Lord brought this young man and all that he went through to become the king of Israel. And then when I read about the story of Obedidom, the Lord says, stop. I want you to meditate. I want you to talk about Obedidom, the Gittite. So this evening, the word of God is going to come from 2 Samuel chapter 6. And we're going to be reading from verse, from verse 6 to 12. May the Lord bless his word right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord open our understanding to comprehend what he's about to say to us. By the end of this sermon, his name alone be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Follow me in your scriptures. Obedidom is the man we are going to look at, the Gittite. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. Verse 7. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him dead and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, that place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obededom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obededom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed him and his entire household. Verse 12. Now King David was told the Lord has blessed the household of Obededom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obededom to the city of David with rejoicing. Hallelujah. A very interesting story carries a very huge significance as someone who is following the Lord. This is a passage of the Bible that is very, very... When I read, when I, when I got here, the Lord says, stop. I want you to talk about Obedidom. Hallelujah. You see, the Ark of the Covenant of God, the Lord assigned the Levites to be the ones to take care of it. Priestly, these are the priests. That everything that happens in the house of God, they are the ones in charge. Any other person that tries to come closer to the ark of the covenant of God will be, will be dead. And that was what happens to Uzzah. Thank God for Jesus. In those days, God wasn't playing. <laughs> God was never playing in those days. Uzzah was only trying to help because the, because the oxen had, has tumbled and Uzzah was only trying to help. So the ark of the covenant of God would not fall. Uzzah trying to help and, you know, and reset it back. And the Lord struck him there. In our eyes, he did nothing wrong. But before God, that was abomination. Because he's not a Levite. 
when David saw this, David was afraid. David got very terrified to see what the Lord did. Because Uzzah died immediately by the side of the Ark of the Covenant of God. And David said, let's take this Ark. David said, I'm not going to take this Ark to the, to, 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 to the city of David. I'm, I'm going to leave this Ark. Let's take it to the, to the house of Abedin and the Gittite. Remember. Because the man called Abedin the Gittite. When you say the Gittite, the Gittite, this, this Gittite is from actually from, from the Philistine. So, but a lot of people are asking questions. Why did the Philistine end up in the midst of the Israelites? Remember when David, when David fled, fled from Saul, at some point he decided that he would stop hiding in the midst of the Israelites. So he decided to fly he flee to Philistine. And he dwelt in a, in a city, one of the biggest cities of the Philistines called Gath. He stayed there in Ziglag. And after everything, David decided to come back home. And he was a great influencer, a great leader. He had influenced about 600 men. And 600, money, 600 men followed David from, 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 from Gath back to Israel. So I want to believe that this Obedidim, the Gittite, was one of the guys who followed David to come back. Because, the, because Gittite is in Philistine. So this Obedidim, I, I, I strongly believe, is different from the Obedidim, the son of Jehud, Jesutan. Hallelujah. There's a little bit of ground. So, David said, let's carry the Ark of the Covenant of God to the house of Obedidim, the Gittite. So, but my question is, who does have to die? Obedidam the Gita is supposed to die? So David was afraid. Afraid of his life because God was upset. God was angry. So he killed Uzzah. When David saw that, he was, he was terrified. But who's supposed to die? That's the question. You understand what I'm saying? Who's supposed to die? It's Obedidam the one supposed to die because he was just a poor man. Obedidam was just a poor, poor man taking care of his sheep and farm. A farmer. You know, when I, when, 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 I, when I got here, I say, what? I wonder how Obedidam felt. I wonder how he felt when, he, when, when the news got to him that the king said we should bring the ark to your house. I mean, hearing what the Lord did to Uzzah. Hearing what the Lord did to Uzzah, Obedidam is not a Levite. He was terrified. But God is not a man. So they took the Ark of the Covenant of God to the house of Obedidam. I wonder how he felt. He probably was crying. They were terrified. But still, he was a faithful man. He believed in God. He was connected to God. And God saw that the Ark of the Covenant was taken to his house. Because everyone was afraid to come close to it. Hallelujah. But God is not a man. You know, what I, what I get out from this passage of the scripture, sometimes the enemy, every time the enemy is always pushing, trying to rid you of God's blessings. The enemy does not want to see you pro progress. The enemy does not want to see you prosper. But you need to stay connected to God. Can you hear me right now? You need to stay connected to God. Because when you stay connected to God, whatsoever the enemy devised against you will become the source of your progress. Will become the source of your wealth. Somebody's not hearing me tonight. David went home. All the Israelites went home. Maybe expecting to hear that the Lord destroyed the household of Abedidim. Can you hear me? They were expecting to hear that the Lord destroyed the household of Abedidim. That the Ark of the Covenant of God has destroyed the house of Abedidim. But let me tell you something. The same God who killed Uzzah. <laughs> the same God who, who terrified the Philistines and destroyed their home. The same God who, who destroyed a lot of people. Is capable of blessings. It's capable of blessing people. It's capable of raising the dead. It's capable of healing the sick. In, in Isaiah chapter 45, he says, I, I create evil. I make peace. I, the Lord, do all these things. In Psalm 103, verse 6, it, it says, The Lord reigns righteousness and justice to the oppressed. 
the Lord works righteousness and justice to the oppressed. In my understanding, Obedidon was being oppressed because if he had refused to, to, to allow the ark of the covenant of God to come to his house, the king would say, put him to death. But the ark went to his house. But let me tell you something. People were expecting to hear his doom. But let me tell you something. Within three months, within, within three months, the Bible say, Obedino was enormously blessed. Hey, this have to be, they, they, they didn't tell us, the Bible didn't record the gravity of the blessings that Obedino received. But I'm, I'm about to tell you something. That blessing was so big. It was huge. That it had to be recorded in the Bible. The blessing was so huge that when David heard about it in verse 12, David said, I'm going, I'm going to collect the Ark of the Covenant of God and bring it to the city of David. Whatever the enemy device against you, whether it be death, whether it be setback, whether it be demotion, whatever they come against you, wait. Hey, I'm, I'm about to tell you right now. Do not worry. All you need is to stay connected with God. And God will turn it around for your good. Remember the story of Joseph. He was sold. They didn't care if he died. Joseph went through a lot of things. And, and he was sold just for his dream to come to pass. When the Lord promises you greatness... A lot of setback and obstacle is going to come with it. Don't worry about it when they come because they are there to fulfill the prophecy that the Lord has spoken concerning your life. How the enemy works. The enemy will come. They will plot it. They will set it up. And they will launch it. Then they will rock back and waiting for you to cry out. But if you are connected to God, <laughs> Somebody can hear me. If you are connected to God, whatsoever that the enemy has devised against you will be the source of your prosperity and your progress and your wealth. You need to understand that a better than was just a, a farmer, was, no, was a neighbor, it was a, a, a nobody, a Gittite who happened to be in the midst of the Israelites. Jesus people we are expecting to hear to hear him cry out help me David the king David was expecting to hear that Obedidom and his whole family has been doomed but the news he got was sir Obedidom is very rich right now Obedidom is the, the gravity of blessings we see in the house of Obedidom we can't explain the Lord, the same God who killed Uzzah has blessed Obedidom and his household. Can somebody hear me? They will hear your story. The enemy will hear your story. The enemy will, will, will hear that what they plan to destroy you with became the source of your blessings. That what they plan to destroy you with became a ladder to which you use to climb up to where God wants you to be. Do not worry. All I'm saying is this. Stay connected to God. Can you hear me right now? Stay connected to God. When things are going good for you, stay connected. When things are wrong, stay connected. In every situation, stay connected. Because the devil is always striking. And when the devil strikes, the Lord will use it. And make it and change it. For your own good. To shame the devil. The Lord made an example with obeying him. When David was looking at him in one side, David, David only saw the Lord, the Lord Kiruza. Oh God, I, I might die. The Lord is going to kill me too. So what am I going to do with this Ark of the Covenant of God right now? Let's, 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 let's just move it to the house of Obedidim. If he dies, he dies. If he perishes, he perishes. I'm gone. The Lord said, all right. All right. Watch and see what I'm going to do in the life of Obedidom. And within three months, Obedidom was a blessed man. I want to encourage somebody right now. 
Don't be worried. Do not panic when the enemy devises deceitful hearts against you. When, when, when they come against you, stay connected to God. David was a connected man. The same David. He was connected to God. That was why, Paul, that was why Saul wasn't able to get him. That was why Saul couldn't destroy him. Many times Saul tried to destroy David. The Lord always made a way for him to escape. Even when Saul went to, went to David, when David was with, with, with Samuel, when he got there, he began to prophesy. The Bible says he lay down naked. <laughs> when the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. I don't want to keep this message too long, but this particular passage of the Bible opened my eyes to understand once you are connected to God, he would definitely reign righteousness and justice in the time that you need it. Obey them, whom everyone was expecting to hear his downfall and his destruction. What ahead was obey them is progressing. Prosperity is in his household. Blessing has become the portion of Abedidim since the ark of the covenant of God was taken to his house. Don't worry. When the enemy comes to you with sickness, when the enemy comes to you with downfall, when the enemy plan and conspire against you, you don't have to worry. It's all for good. For this sickness is not unto death, but to bring the glory, to bring glory to the name of the Most High God. For this evil plans of the enemy is not for your downfall, but to bring glory to the name of God because God is going to use the same ark. The same ark of the covenant of God that killed Uzzah is the one that brought blessings to the house of Abedidim. Hallelujah. The same ark that destroyed the Philistines and destroyed Dagon, the same ark that inflicted destruction and doom to different nations was the same ark that blessed who uh, um, obeyed them. The same evil plans that destroyed a lot of people. The same plot that destroyed a lot of people that the devil has visited you with, be it sickness, be it virus, be it whatever, the Lord is going to use it for your own good. Do not be discouraged. Focus on the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you strength to, to stay connected to Him. May the Lord fight your battle for you. May the Lord open the doors that no man can shut in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray tonight. Amen. Make sure and share this video, subscribe and comment. We'll be back again next time. God bless you viewers all over the world, wherever you're watching from. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord open that door that no man can shut. May the same ark that destroyed different nations, many nations, bless you just like how the same ark of the covenant of God bless you, obeyed them. The same thing will take place in your life. Are you being oppressed? I pray that the, that the mercy of the Lord and the righteousness and justice of the Lord will locate you right now and prove to you that the Lord has not forsaken or leave you. That the Lord is still with you. That the Lord is still in your household. In the name of Jesus, I pray. May the blessings of a better than become your portion from today as you stay connected to the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this evening. Amen. God bless you for watching. God bless you. See you next time. Amen.